You know what the best thing is about a nice camera is you can make anywhere in the world look like the coolest place. Right, so currently reporting from my local gym on a Sunday, about to start a workout. We're here to discuss last Friday's session on Hustler Casino Live, during which I unfortunately had the biggest loss of my life. I'm not gonna tell you the exact amount, that'll be the surprise, but spoiler alert, I did not win. I'm gonna share some thoughts about the whole thing after the hands, but for now, enough of me yapping and saying things you guys don't care about, you wanna see the hands, so, Let's get right into those from last Friday night. All right, guys, underway here at Hustler Casino Live. Today's structure is a bit different. We're playing 5,100, but the big blind ante is 200. A slight difference, meaning you should play a few more hands, I believe, since there's a bigger big blind ante, but doesn't change too much aside from that. I sit with $100,000, and in the first interesting hand, I raise it up from early position with king eight suited and face a re-raise from Hoodie Allen in the big blind to 1,500. Now with a hand like this, I think we should mostly just be folding, but he's got around 40,000 or a bit more in his stack, so plenty to play for, and I've got position. So I decide to make a somewhat speculative call, and we go to a flop. Queen 6-4 with no heart is about as bad as it gets for me. So when Hoodie checks it over to me, even though he might have an ace high type hand that we could try to get to fold, I decide to just check it back since we have some removal to ace king, which is one of those hands we try to get him to fold, and see what happens on the turn. Turn card looks like good news. It's the king of diamonds. So we went from a really bad flop to a pretty good board now as I've got top pair. However, Hoodie now bets out for quite the big sizing. Pot's 3,200, and he puts in a bet of 4,500. So yeah, not exactly an easy spot for me despite having top pair, and I decide to make a pretty careful fold. I don't know exactly what was going through my mind aside from I just had a bad feeling about this one, decide to let it go, and luckily I did because he's got himself pocket aces that was trapping on the flop. The very next shuffle, this hand goes down where there's an open to 300, a call from Mike X, and then Hoodie Allen re-raises once more, this time $2,000. I'm in the big blind next to act, and I've got a hand of my own pocket queens, definitely gonna be good enough to re-raise, so I make it 5,000 to go. Now it gets back to Hoodie Allen, who thinks over his options for a bit before announcing all in for $45,000. 40000 for me to call, and now we are in quite the tough situation. Of course, I've got a great hand, but his hand just looks so strong after all this action. Putting in all his chips despite me re-raising his original re-raise definitely seems like a sign of strength, if you will. Of course, he could have hands like ace-king or maybe ace-five suited once in a while. Debatable how often he would do that. But either way, I'm in a tough spot with queens as he could also very easily have pocket aces or pocket kings, which of course have me in terrible shape. So after a few minutes of contemplation, I decide to play it safe once more and let go of these pocket queens pre-flop. What I consider a hero fold, if I'm being honest, not something I do too often, but once again, we are dodging some trouble here as we were up against pocket kings. Nice hand hoodie. So not the easiest start to a session, but I've got the perfect remedy pocket aces. In this one, I put on the $200 straddle, one of the best positions to get aces in, I might add. There's an open from clue to 600, and I make it 3,300. Gets back to him, and he makes the call in position. We go to a flop of Jack-9-9 nine nine Rainbow. I continue with a small bet of $2,000, and he makes the call. Turn card is an absolute brick. It's the three of hearts. 
Now we have a question between checking or betting. Honestly, in the moment, I thought checking was the better play, but perhaps being a little too desperate for value, I decided to continue betting this time $10,000. Of course, if he's got a jack or a hand like he does here, pocket tens, this bet isn't too terrible as he's most likely going to continue with those holdings. But I think checking is better because there's probably more value in letting him bluff with obviously a worse hand or perhaps value bet a weaker hand than my pocket aces. We also pot control against the few times he's got a hand like jacks or trip nines. However, none of that happens. I put in $10,000 and Clue makes a pretty tight fold with pocket tens. He was correct though, so nice play by him. In the next one, Ryan Feldman opens up the action to 400. Mike X calls in the cutoff, and I defend the big blind with queen 10 different suits. We go to a flop of 986 rainbow. I flopped what is called a double gutter, meaning any seven or jack would give me a straight. I check, Ryan bets $800, Mike X makes the call. And I think this is a good board for me to get aggressive on. Could represent 10-7 for the flopped straight. And of course, I've got plenty of available options if I do get called. We could always turn top pair or a straight. So I make it 4,500 to go. Ryan thinks for a bit and does not call, but does not fold either. Instead, he puts in another raise, which is pretty odd, if I'm being honest. He makes it 8,600, essentially a min raise. Mike X gets out of the way with his bottom pair. Now it's back on me and we have a question between calling or putting in another raise, I guess. Don't really see a lot of merit to uh, that second option, so I do decide to call and we see the king of diamonds on the turn. I check it over again and this time Ryan bets right around half pot, 10,500. Now we reach the point in the hand where I think it's the most critical decision for me. We still have a good draw. Like I said, any seven or jack would improve me to a straight. And we could also hit a queen or a 10, which would be an overcard to a flopped top pair. For example, if he's got a hand like ace nine, as he does here, uh, queen nine suited, 10 nine suited, these sorts of holdings. Well, actually, if he's got 10 nine, then he would turn two pair once I turn a 10. But you guys get what I'm saying. Plenty of cards that would help us out. But at the same time, calling with queen high out of position does not seem ideal. So I think my only good options here are to either check raise or let this one go. So I'm not too happy with what I decide to do, which is just call. In the moment, I was thinking I should definitely be raising. Why am I calling? But as you guys can see, that's exactly what I do. However, perhaps the river card will bail me out. It does not. It's the king of clubs. I check with queen high. That is exactly the big mistake of calling on the turn is you get into situations like this on the river. Ryan checks it back with his uh, river two pair and we end up losing against ace nine. So yeah, a little bit unfortunate that we don't improve, but I certainly could have played the hand better and given myself more of an opportunity to win it. In the next one, there's a raise from Mike to 300 before Hoodie Allen kicks it up to 1200 on the button. I'm next to act in the small blind and I know you guys can't see the cards, but I've got ace jack unsuited. More often than not, should probably just fold this given there's a raise and a re-raise ahead of me and I'm out of position. But I haven't played a hand in a while, and I suspect Hoodie might be a little bit worried that I've got a monster. So I make it 4,000, trying to make it look like I've got something strong. Mike X gets out of the way. Hoodie Allen does not. We go to a flop of 984 Rainbow. Probably a better board for him than it is for me, which means I'm not going to be betting this board too often. But when I do, I think a bigger size is better. So I put in a bet of $8,000 right around the size of the pot. If I'm being honest, that's probably a little bit too big of a bet. But either way, here we are. Hoodie makes the call with his overpair, and we see another nine on the turn. Now it's a tough spot. Do we continue bluffing? Do we check and try to just get to showdown or essentially give up on the hand with ace jack high? Especially with his stack size, it's a little bit odd as to what I should do. He's got 35,000 left. Pot is around 25,000. So I give this one some thought and decide to bet $10,000. I was thinking to myself, what would I do if I had aces, kings, or queens? And I think that is exactly what I'd do is bet a size to try to get him to call, and then we can go for the rest of the chips on the river. Seems Hoodie Allen perhaps might also think along the same lines because he ends up giving me credit for an overpair and let's go of his pocket tens. We are playing the stand up game, so I have to show this one. Sorry, Mr. Allen, we got away with one here. In the next hand, we are once again battling versus Hoodie Allen. He opens to 400, and I'm next to act with Jack 10 suited. Good hand to re-raise with in position, so I make it 2,000 to go. 
It's back around to him and he makes the call. Heads up to a flop on which we finally flop something. 10-5-4 with a couple of clubs. So not the best board ever, but hey, top pair is top pair, right? Of course, as you guys can see, my rather unfortunate evening continues as Hoodie Allen has flopped himself a slightly better top pair with which he decides to check raise against my $1,500 C-bet. Makes it 4000 to go. He could be doing this with worse hands for sure, like maybe uh, some combo draws or smaller pocket pairs like sixes through nines that he perceives to be the best hand. So of course I call in position and we see an interesting turn card. It's the Ace of Hearts. Of course that doesn't help either of us, but it's generally gonna be a better card for me. And I think Hoodie recognizes that because he slows down and checks it. Now it's a question for me between checking back or continuing to bet. And I think my preferred option is to continue with a very small bet. Could also be doing this with bluffs like King Queen, King Jack. Queen Jack, you know, that sort of stuff. And of course, allows me to continue value betting the times that I do have something. So I think betting small with essentially all my holdings is a good play in this scenario. So I put in $3,500 and after some thought, Hoodie lets it go. Of course, I did not know it in the moment, but I accidentally bluffed him off the best hand. So yeah, pretty fortunate turn card. Now, most of the hands tonight, as you guys can see, haven't been too violent. This one is definitely going to change that. There's an open to 300 from Mike X. Hoodie Allen re-raises to 1,000. And I'm next to act with 10-9 suited. Now, a suited connector like this, facing all this action, should most of the time be folded. And in fact, most of the time, I guess that is what I do. But once in a while, I decide to get in the mix. You know, it makes it less predictable for the times I have aces, kings, the good stuff. So this is one of those times. I make it 3,000 to go. And now Ryan on my direct left, he's on the button, decides to cold call the 3,000. Interesting play from him, but you know, he's got position. How bad could it be? Action gets back around to Mike X now, and he sees all this dead money out there. He knows we could have some weak holdings and decides that his king queen suited is worth another raise. So he makes it 10-5 to go. Hoodie gets out of the way. Now it's back on me. Interesting spot already. You know, we've got uh, a suited connector, but we're between two opponents. And I think this is the point in the hand where I should definitely be letting my hand go. But perhaps a little bit of frustration creeping in, maybe even a little bit of overconfidence from recent sessions going very much my way. So, yeah, you know, I'm not proud of this one, but I do decide to call. And now Ryan has the dream situation with pocket aces and all this action ahead of him. He decides to pounce on it, makes it 25,000 to go. Now it's obvious to me that Ryan was most likely trapping when he cold called my 3000 with a hand like aces, kings, ace, king, ace, queen suited. You know, something pretty darn strong as this back raise definitely reflects a pretty powerful holding of cards. Mike X seems to think along the same lines because he lets go of his king, queen suited. Now it's back on me and it's 14,000 to call. I think it's obvious that I'm up against a much better hand at this point, but we're getting a really good price, only 14,000 to call into a pot that's nearly 50,000. So I think it's a pretty straightforward call at this point, despite knowing I'm behind. Who knows, maybe we'll hit something and could potentially stack Ryan, seeing as we both have so many chips left. So I make the call and we go heads up to a flop, which in the moment I think will allow me to do exactly that. And win a big pot versus Ryan, it's ace 10-9, with two clubs. We flopped two pair on an ace high board. Now my fingers are crossed that he's got ace king or ace queen suited. Of course, he could also have pocket aces, but it's pretty hard to flop top set. I check it over to him, and a little to my surprise, he decides to check it back. Not something I expected on an ace high board. I suspect he would almost always continue betting, at least for a small size, but that's okay. Turn card is the deuce of clubs, and I decide to check it again allowing him to value bet worse hands and also potentially bluff if he was getting out of line preflop with king queen suited or queen jack suited for example. Ryan finally does put in a bet. He makes it 20,000 which is around a third the size of the pot and I keep all options open by just calling. Don't really think check raising accomplishes much aside from targeting hopefully ace king but all his other holdings are probably going to get out of the way unless I'm in serious trouble. So I make the call Pot is now over $100,000, and we see the five of diamonds on the river. Not my favorite card, if I'm being honest, because I do think maybe once in a blue moon, he would do this pre-flop with ace five suited, which of course now beats my 10-9 suited. But, uh, you know, we're going to cross that bridge once we get there. I check it over to him, and he now puts in a bet of $70,000, right around two-thirds the size of the pot. And I think my hand is a pretty straightforward call. 
Yeah, there's a flush possible, but given all the re-raising pre-flop, I don't think he's got clubs. And even if he did have clubs, like for example, King Jack of clubs, he would almost always bet that on the flop, I think. So I immediately dismiss flushes for the most part. Now it's really a question of, is he really value betting ace king or ace queen for this size? Um, well, I think he would, yeah. But at the same time, he could also have aces or the occasional ace five suited, like I said. So yeah, it's kind of a close spot. I definitely don't love his sizing. It seems like a value bet to me, which is why I didn't snap call right away. But in the end, I just don't see how I could possibly fold this hand, especially after playing it slow on the flop and turn. So I do eventually make the call, despite not loving the situation. And we pay the ultimate price. As you guys can see, he's got top set. And this right here is what can happen when you play these speculative hands pre-flop. You get in trouble on a board like this and end up losing a $241,000 pot. In the next super fun hand of No Limit Texas Hold'em, the straddle is on. Hank opens the action to 600 from late position, and I am in the small blind with Jack-10 suited. From this position, I think the better course of action is to either raise or fold. So I decide to raise with a playable hand like this. I make it 3,000. Then Ryan cold calls on my left with king-queen in the big blind. Something he's done earlier, except that time he had aces. This time he's got king-queen. Hank makes the call as well in position, so three of us are going to a flop of jack, nine, deuce, rainbow with one diamond. Once more, I flop top pair. That's a good thing, I think, so I decide to continue betting for 3,000. Ryan makes the call. He's got two overs and a straight draw. Hank does not make the call, but does not fold either. Instead, he decides to raise $13,000 to go, an additional 10K on top of my bet. Seeing as I've got a jack, I think it's unlikely he's got two pair. So hands I'm most concerned with are pocket nines and pocket twos. But it's pretty hard to flop a set, and there are some draws he might be raising with, like maybe bottom pair that starts bluffing, or 10-8 suited, queen-10 suited, you know, these sorts of straight draws that are trying to apply max pressure in position. So I'm not done with it just yet. I make the call. And Ryan makes the call as well, which is certainly a bit concerning to me because I don't think there's too many worse hands than mine that he would play this way. But what do I know? He's got king-queen, so I did have the best hand at this point. Until the turn, it's the eight of hearts, giving Hank the stone-cold nuts with queen-10. I check. Ryan checks. Now Hank puts in another bet, only this time it's for value. $23,000. Action gets back to me, and my top pair is definitely shriveling up, but we do have an open-ended straight draw to go along with it. I think if this eight was a diamond, I'd be a lot more inclined to get in there, but the situation's just getting a little too sketchy for me now, especially with Ryan left to act behind me, so I decide to let it go. Kind of a tight fold, and then Ryan lets it go right away as well, so wasn't sure about my play, but definitely felt better after Hank turned over the queen 10. Nice hand, Hank take it down. In the next one, I straddle for 200. Dylan limps in on the button, and then Hank completes from the small blind. I've got 5-3 of hearts. I decided to just check it. Could occasionally raise, I think, but after how tonight's going, I decided to just keep it chill and check, and we flop a flush draw on queen jack six with one club. Pot's 900, and Hank leads right out for 1,000. One green chip. Now it's on me, and of course with a heart draw, I'm going nowhere. Could raise occasionally, but I don't think it makes too much sense on a board like this, especially versus his large sizing, so I decided to just call. Dylan gets out of the way. Heads up to a turn, which is the ace of spades. Now Hank checks it over to me, and we have a question between trying to bluff or checking it back and hopefully making a flush on the river. And I do think bluffing is probably fine but again on a board like this it's hard for me to really represent anything too credible but if i did have a pair or an ace of course i would probably be betting so yeah i wasn't too sure on this spot i decided to just check it back and instantly regret my decision as we make a flush on the river the king of hearts finally i've got a strong hand i wish the pot was bigger but of course i don't actually wish that because as you guys can see hank has got himself a bigger flush he now leads out for $2,000, and to be completely honest, I almost just called right away because we could be up against bigger flushes. But as you guys can see, any 10 would also make a straight on this board, so he could certainly be value betting just a 10, and then we wouldn't get that much value if we only called. So I decide to raise it up in hopes that he does have a straight, make it 8,500 to go, knowing full well once in a while, I'll be value owning myself against a bigger flush. And that's exactly what's happening here. He makes the call and we lose to eight four of hearts. Another nice hand going over to Hank. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to my last interesting hand of the night. I am in the double straddle this hand for 400. Ryan opens up the action from early position to 2000. And when it gets back to me, I've got King Jack off suit. I will be the first to say this hand should mostly be a call and maybe once in a blue moon, a re-raise, mostly because it has removal to strong stuff, and we get a lot of value from just taking it down pre-flop. However, that does not happen this time. I make it 10,000 to go, choosing the aggressive route. Ryan goes nowhere just yet. He's got his king. Flop comes down 10-8 deuce rainbow. Kind of a neutral flop, perhaps a little bit better for him since he's gonna have a set more often than I would ever have a set. Sure, sometimes I'll have 10s and 8s, but he'll have 10s, 8s, and deuces every single time as played, I think. So anyway, I decided to continue with a small bet of 6,300, right around one third of the sides of the pot. Ryan makes the call, and we see the five of clubs on the turn. Now, of course, I'm not loving my hand, but I do think Ryan would call the flop with a lot of hands that will now fold, such as ace highs, maybe some weak pairs like uh, any pocket pair that's not a set or 8-7 suited, for example. So I decide to continue applying pressure just like I would if I had an over pair or ace-10 suited, maybe even king-10 suited. You guys get the idea. I bet $20,000. Ryan thinks about it for a bit and makes the call. So things are definitely heating up now. Would like to make a pair on the river, but probably going to bluff some river cards, I think. And the four of spades is definitely one of them. We've got removal to pocket jacks, jack-10 suited, king-10 suited. I guess that's not too relevant, but things that are good properties about my exact hand. And more importantly, we don't have an ace, which I think is good because he could be floating with an ace that we could now finally get him to fold on this river. Don't expect him to call all the way down with an ace-high type holding since he could have so many better hands on this river now. With all that in mind, I think to myself, how much would I bet if I was betting for value with pocket 10s or any over pair? And the answer is right around half pot. Now, I do make a mistake here and bet 45,000. I was actually trying to bet 35,000. So that was what I guess you call a misclick. But I don't think it makes too much difference. In fact, it's probably even better since I was bluffing to use a slightly bigger sizing. But now it's on Ryan. He's facing a $45,000 bet, getting a decent price to call. But he does only have ace high and loses to quite a bit of value hands. It's also not great for him to have an ace since, you know, he would want me to have an ace that I'm bluffing with. But what do I know? Apparently not much because after some thought, Ryan makes the hero call with ace king high. And as you guys can see, it is quite the nice call as I am bluffing this time. And Ryan continues to own me on this night. He wins a $163,000 pot this time, and I am having quite the rough night. This, uh, this was the last fun one, if you will, of the night. Well, certainly not fun for me, but interesting one. And perhaps fortunate for me that it was, because things are not going my way on this night. Stream ended shortly after, and that was a story about how I lost a bunch of money. Hope you guys enjoyed the hands. Okay, so first things first, I obviously did not play very well. I think that's apparent. Certainly didn't run very well either, and the stakes were pretty big. It was essentially 50, 100, 200 for most of the night. So when all three things combine, you're gonna lose a lot of money. That was the case for myself. The bottom line was minus $257,000 and some change across six hours. Brutal, absolutely brutal. Now, this giant loss, the biggest loss of my life, uh, has two effects. One is emotional, the other one is financial slash logistics, if you will. So I'll start with emotional. I'm surprisingly okay with it. I've been sun running for the better part of a year. I think most of you know that. And correction to the mean or reversion or regression or whatever the term is, you know, when things go back to average, sometimes it's going to be kind of violent. Sometimes it'll be really slow and painful. Sometimes it'll be quick and painless. Well, painless might be the wrong word, but you guys get the idea. Um, in terms of the financial effect of it, it's certainly a lot of money, but I'm never playing outside of what I think is a responsible budget, something I advise everyone else to do as well. And yeah, I'm just gonna focus on what I can control, which are decision points and trying to get better at poker, something I often am working on. Gonna continue playing on Hustler, gonna continue uh, just doing my thing with the vlog. This Sunday, I have another 50, 100, or maybe 25, 50 in Las Vegas with Rampage. So the show goes on. Um, but as always, thank you guys for the support. 
Thank you for uh, watching the videos. Thank you for being along for the ride, even though sometimes it gets a little bumpy. But yeah, nothing to do aside from focus on things that I can control, like I said. That's really priority number one. And that's why I'm here today at the gym. I'm gonna lift some weights and uh, shut my brain off for a while. As always, thank you guys for the support. And until next time, good luck at your local tables. Peace.